Hi, and welcome to the Drove Pro segment on determining the right size scale for your machine. Now, the first thing we need to be concerned with with finding the right size scale is to measure the actual travel of your machine. Now, in this case, we're doing a benchtop mill, and what we want to determine is the actual travel of the x-axis. Let's go ahead and bring the table all the way to one side where our hand wheel won't move anymore and we simply make or scribe a mark between the top and the bottom of where the table moves versus a stationary part of the table. Now we will move the table in the opposite direction. You can see those two lines or that mark starts to split between the two of them. And then we're going to simply measure between those two marks and that distance is the actual, the table's actual travel, or maximum travel. Now we've moved our table all the way to the other extreme end of the travel, so what we want to do now is get a measure between these two red marks, between the left and right points, and that will be our total travel of the machine. And it looks to be about, from left to the right mark, is about 13 and a half inches worth of travel. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a 150 millimeter scale and define some of the parts. Now we also have a piece of blue plastic here on the bottom and that's, while it's only for shipping, it also is an excellent piece for mounting and determining the distance between the reader head and the body that you want that mounted. So the first step would be to go ahead and remove, there's a total of four screws here, and I want to remove the screws, hopefully you can see this, the screws right here that connect the plastic uh, shipping piece to the body of the scale. And I'm going to leave the two screws between the shipping, between the blue plastic and also the reader head. I'm going to leave those connected for now. So let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, so at this point I've removed the two screws that secure the blue plastic to the body of the scale. And let's go ahead and mark that. You can see I'm going to use the center point here of the reader head and I'm going to mark that onto the, the body of the scale. And then if I move the reader head to the other side of the scale, I'm going to make a similar mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the different parts. First, we have a reader head on the bottom, and then we have the body of the scale up here on top. And then, of course, the cable exiting out of the side of the reader head that would plug into our display, or DRO. Now, a couple of things that we've got here. You can see that I've made a mark on the reader head at the far end of the movement of the scale. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the other side. And you can see that I've moved it to the far end. And this is the actual movement or the capacity of this particular scale. Now with a 150 millimeter scale, the difference between these two marks is 5.9 inches. And the overall distance or the physical length of the scale is six inches longer than that, so it has an overall physical length of 11.9 inches. And that's true for all our different scales. The overall length is going to be six inches longer than the actual travel or capacity of the scale. Now at this point, we've determined that our mill has a capacity or travel of 13.5 inches. But that doesn't mean that we want a scale with exactly 13 and a half inches. As we look previously on our scale, we want to make sure that we don't run the reader head into the far end of the scale. So as a general rule of thumb, we want to leave at least half an inch of either end for clearance so that we don't run this reader head into the end of the scale. So in the case of this bench top, with 13 and a half inches of travel, we add half an inch on either end and so we need a scale of at least 14 and a half inches of travel so that we clear the end of the scale. Now one more thing to remember, 
Sometimes we can't mount the scale exactly where we want to. Sometimes you have to offset the scale either to the left or to the right. Maybe you have a coolant exit or maybe you have a seam in the metal, whatever have you. It's always better to go a little bit larger in the scale just so you can offset the scale to the left or right. It just makes it a little bit easier for mounting. Okay, well that concludes the segment on scales. Let's go ahead and give a wrap up. First, we want to determine the travel of our machine. Second, we want to add one inch to the overall travel of the machine in order to determine the length of the scale required. And lastly, the little blue plastic piece that we talked about that's in between the reader head and the scale body, we want to make sure and remove that when everything's done and mounted because again, that is only for shipping. We can use it as double duty, if you will, to determine the distance between mounting the scale body and also the reader head. So make sure when you're all done to remove that little blue plastic piece. Well, that concludes this segment on scales. I hope you found it informative. And now you know how to choose the right size scale.